Hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. This week I am continuing to explore with color and the same color palette as I used in the previous um, Exploring Color video. The colors, as you can see, are Cerulene, Cadmium, Red Deep, uh, Yellow Oxide, I think last time was Yellow Ochre, and um, Parchment, Titanium White, and no black this time. And um, I was just finishing writing up my notes. And yes, I put a little bit of that, no, I didn't put any of that down, just because I just, I don't know, I just didn't want to use black. I, for some reason, I wanted to stay away from it and go much lighter, which if you stay to the end, you will see my whole process. And if you are new here, I am Michelle Holden, the artist behind All My Art and Soul. And this is a mixed media abstract. Um, I'm calling it an art tutorial. As my videos become, I think, a little bit more instructional or I don't know if I even want to say that. I don't even want to go there. But I'm just showing you what I do as I learn uh, and um, we are all, I'm on this journey and you're here with me. So I love the way I started this and um, I was looking through and found some other artists in a very interesting, um, um, an interesting uh, way uh, on my channel because I was, um, and I don't know her name, I was... I love old houses, and this channel is about how I purchased a French chateau, and of course she's an artist, and um, her plans for an art retreat in this beautiful old building, it is a dream of mine to somehow have some kind of art retreat workshops, even if, you know, it starts off on a different, uh, in a different setting, but that would be awesome. So I just caught the way she started her work and I thought, you know what, I wanna try that. So no real mixing at the beginning. So this is CAD medium deep with yellow ochre and using a lot of water. Now, of course I'm using paper, she was using a canvas, but I really think I like this. I have in my mind's eye this uh, pieces or areas of the canvas still showing through even to the end uh, even with a thin wash just to you know bring it down if it's too much of a we'll call it a flashlight so back to the page this time when I taped down the page um, as you could see I was showing you with my finger I also put the um, gloss medium um, around the edge just to see how much of a crisper edge it would create and just keeping that in mind for other other work or other shapes that I'm using if I use tape on my larger canvases that's coming up as soon as my renovation is done I'm redoing my studio and creating another workspace for canvases which will be a new video series. So I just can't wait. And more live, just painting and talking to you, you know, if, it, if, if I can. Um, we know we get into a zone and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So with this, um, putting the warm colors first or the red and orange first, drying the layer, of course, because we don't want to create a mud um, unless you want that all depends and then just experimenting with the values I thought I was um, um, having a fun time doing this with mauves and just different things happening with the cerulean blue adding a lot of white it's not a blue I usually use I usually use um, the teal or um, Gee, turquoise, my other favorites, and magenta. Oh, not magenta, manganese, manganese blue, which is so transparent and very expensive, mind you. So I'm just drawing the, drawing this up, 
And I'll read you some notes that I put down, like I showed you on the other page, because I'm using my Exploring Color mixed media sketchbook, dating it, writing the notes as to what my intention was. And you might want to do this too, because when you're creating so many, you know, you're exploring so many pages and different purposes and things, it's just really nice to go back. Oh yeah, I was really looking for that. That's what I was doing. I want to try that on this painting, right? So really enjoying this color palette. My intention today was to use lighter values. I wanted a beautiful lighter and it, it, it does, it, it turned out light with just a few um, minor small contrasts of black and white with the collage at the end. So I didn't use black paint. I wanted to hold off on using collage until the later layers. I want to get used to painting in my areas, my layers, my marks, shapes, letting, um, let some of the under layers, layers show through as shapes. Let shapes naturally evolve as areas of color, value, or patterns, um, such as using this stencil. I haven't used this stencil. Uh, it wasn't too organic and it wasn't too geometric. And I like the size of the shapes, so I chose to use the blue in some blue areas, you know, playing with value and sticking to subtlety. So in the end, what is it that I really like? Or you might want to write down, what did you really, what was your takeaway? The takeaway is subtlety. So I love, I'm writing it right now, the subtlety of the marks, layers, and I used oil pastel along with the Posca markers. And I, I like the idea of using a yellow near a yellow, you know, um, a different red over top, uh, a different red background, maybe going into the oranges, warm and cool. So I didn't like that shape. I don't like those loopy shapes. I just, I don't know what it is. I'm really liking the grid. I'm really liking slightly, um, how would you call it? Soft edged, organic, rectangular shapes, square shapes with just, of course, my circles. But my circles are usually, usually open unless I'm using the collage, collage circles or the stamping at the end. And I wanted to just stay away from that this time. And at the top, I didn't want to use black because I usually use black. So I was really, um, I wouldn't say forcing myself, but nudging myself in, in just to trying, trying different things. So I think that's good. And the more we try different things and, of course, build our, you know, our experiences, then once we, um, like my goal is, once I start this uh, large canvas series, various sizes, some are pretty big, um, that's what I'm thinking, it's sort of in the back of my mind when I was doing this page today. So I was thinking, okay, I want to make marks that I could also make with a, a large trowel or a larger brush. And I'm really liking the brush strokes on a large surface if they're loose and you see this texture. Um, I don't know if, um, um, I'm sure a lot of you follow Adele I don't know if you're part of the academy. Um, I am. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful place to learn. Um, she keeps everything so simple. And I guess I like it because I can be so complex. So I'm liking going the other way. 
Um, anyway, uh, not to promote other artists, but I'm always, you know, cautious when, when I, when I talk about other artists, but I don't know. I think we should all support each other and, um, uh, it's fantastic. Anyway, so as you can see, the red area, um, really, I made me respond with that red pastel, oil pastel. And I show you here, and um, you just use, um, I think you could use a gloss or a matte. Um, there it is, medium. And I just put it a little bit, and it's very fluid. It's not the heavy, it's just the regular one. And uh, I like to dampen my brush, and then of course take some water off. And then I just go over it very quickly. So you're sealing the oil pastel so it doesn't smudge or it just, you know, it stays because of course your acrylic is water-based and your oil pastel is oil-based. So water, oil, that whole thing. And I want to make sure it's dry before I move on. As I'm building this, these layers, and I'm really loving the idea, where did I get this? Oh, yes. Um, um, I, have a, I have a few mentor artists, and um, I haven't had time to really do the lessons lately because of my, my work and everything. So I'm just doing what I can do for myself. But, oh, March break is coming up, and I am looking forward to it. Um, just thinking in so many layers, like at least um, 10 or so, and on a painting, like at least 10, maybe five at the beginning before you even start to get um, attached or things are precious. And that's really helping. As you can see, the, um, the China markers love to give me a hard time. And you can see that that one's peeled really high. I try to peel it down properly and it just doesn't work. So I know, and please leave a comment. Um, so I was just about how you use the China markers, how you get past this little problem. And uh, I've got a box each of just the white and the black. And I just felt it needed to go right in there. Just a little bit of contrast, you know? And of course my, my I love my little black lines dots, lines, dashes, whatever you want to call them. And if my voice is sounding funny as it is right now, and I might have to stop <laughs> and cough and start again, it's because I have a really bad cold. <laughs> Continued from last time, I think that was Thursday's affirmation art journaling video. I barely got through that, but we're going to do it. So loving these light value um, areas of color and I like how it's cohesive because I'm doing more mixing at least a little bit more I'm sure I, I, I can do more than than what I'm doing but um, thinking that the top needed to be heavier I didn't want it to be dark but I wanted it to be heavier more opaque so yes the direction now I've been trying to put this red and I knew today oh yeah you're gonna go in this somehow just a section of this collage which was just dripping paint on some paper and I think rolling it with uh, just once or twice with the brer and it came out so cool so I just left it this collage has been around a lot and it's just on newsprint and so I might, I don't know if I glued that in yet. I might glue it in a little bit higher, but not much higher. Oh, I know. It was one of these days, as, as you know, or you don't know, if you just joined, um, the studio is full of my kitchen. <laughs> and there's not a lot of room. So it's feeling a little claustrophobic. So things sort of got that way at the side. I think a brush and who knows what fell off the right-hand side of my table. It's a very large table. But once you fill it with, you know, your overhead camera, it isn't on it, but, you know, you want a nice, I like a nice clean kind of area. And you need to see 
um, without it being too busy. So as you can see, I added a little more yellow, but in hindsight, I don't like it. So I put in a piece of collage, that's uh, that white stuff on the left, as you can see. That is tracing paper with, there it is, with white Posca marker, just drawn marks. And it's looking much nicer. And I know already, um, next time I won't paint it upside down because that paper is sticky and just, oh, just loves to get fold and uh, it's very particular. Uh, so I put this in and I don't even know what this stuff is. Oh, I know what it is. I've got these uh, old this calendars from the 1920s and it was this paper that was in between separating them, some kind of older, and I don't even know how much I have left, that I, probably hardly any. And it was so cool how it's so transparent. So as you can see, next time I'll dry that paint, put the gel gloss or the, or the medium, sorry, on there and I changed my mind because I realized, no, I, I need to get rid of that yellow a bit. And as you can see, it melts in quite nicely, but, you know, with a little coaxing. And with and being careful not to push down too hard because this stuff likes to tear. And so it's gone past the edges so I wait, um, or I should wait until it dries before I slice or cut it with my X-Acto knife. Because um, wet paper and an X-Acto knife doesn't really cut that cleanly, but that's okay. So drying up the surface, and this one speeding along as um, I love all the marks and the different layers the mauves, the oranges underneath and blending with each other, the soft edges. And you see right in the middle there, you can sort of where the red piece of collage is, sort of at uh, one o'clock to it, behind that black dot, there's the beginning of the page where we didn't, I didn't cover it, and that's sort of shining through. And if it is a bit of a flashlight, you can always just put in a little bit of a wash just to take it down. But I don't want it to disappear. Yes, I was playing with this thick paper on paper, and I wasn't sure. I haven't used it yet on on a journal page or a mixed, uh, it's not a journal page, mixed media abstract page. So I wasn't sure. So I put it to the side, and I found... Um, this stuff, black Posca marker on tracing paper, and I love how it just blends right in. It is so cool. And then I realize, oh, I think I'll add pieces to it, you know, sort of that repetition, but it's slightly off. And this one wasn't that off, but I really liked how it sort of, like, puzzles. And of course... It is um, um, warping a bit there, so I was searching for, and this is, what I like about this is that it's blue, but it's a different blue, but it goes well enough, I think. It's just something a little different in that blue area, and I would, I'm really working towards just doing a, some blue paintings. So that isn't quite dry, it's a little damp. And my pencil's very sharp, so I realize it tore through there. So I'll just leave it, let it dry. Just going through some last-minute um, collage pieces. I know I want some black and white. I love black and white, even if it's just little. That's the wrong spot, so it needs to be over there on the left. Yes. And, of course, my sort of organic dots. So, and a little bit of a grid, and 3339, or 369, that kind of deal. So this is looking good, the color. 
And, you know, that piece up there would have looked interesting, you know, in hindsight, somehow. So that off-white, so who knows what I might do um, in the near future if it sits around a bit. So what it did is made me think, okay, if that color looks so nice, why don't we do one last layer of stencil in the parchment or a combination of white and parchment. And just across where the yellow is, keep it really thin. And it'll just add that another subtle layer and a little bit up top. And I don't even know. It just turns out so subtle. I really like it. And it was a bit, that, that piece of paper, You'd think, oh, it has enough marks on it, but it just didn't do, and that really added. So then I brought a little bit of that neutral or off-white and just pushed back the black circles and definitely helps pushing them back a bit more. Now, I'm not really sure about the upper area where the white meets the yellow and mauve and everything, so I bring that in with some pastel and some other lines. So stay to the end. I hope you're enjoying um, this mixed media abstract art tutorial about exploring color number two. I hope it's number two, uh, number three. Uh, no, I think it is number three. So I will change that. Last week was number two. But at least this is number two with this palette. So... I don't think it really matters. Really enjoying how this is coming together as I acquire more layering experiences. I'm adding it to my, you know, just to my knowledge as to, oh yeah, let's try this. I remember that. And I know there's a proper name for that. So if you remember it, please leave it in the comments. <laughs> And what's your favorite mark-making tool along with your acrylic on your page? Is it the Posca marker? Is it pastels? Is it the, oh, there's those, the, the woodies. There's the, oh, there's so much. Needed the pink, and I really think it added and brought the eye down just a little bit down there. Without overdoing it, of course, I do the sprinkly thing, but I only do a little bit in the yellow oxide. Oh, here comes the yellow. Yes. Notice I just put it in behind those shapes and just a little where there's a yellow. I didn't want to overdo it. Just needed a little bit. Yeah, that piece, and that's the great big one. So, oh, that's what I decided. I decided to bring the white down rather than going the other way. Yes, that's so much better. It just, you know, softened that edge. So here comes the big reveal and we'll see how the edges are. Of course, I've got this little bit of paper tearing going on, but the X-Acto knife can take care of that. And I did notice that the edges were a lot sharper. Not that that matters for, for this because, um, of course, this is a, what is this? Um, it's an 8 by 10 on a, what is the 11 by, anyway, it's the large, it's the large mixed media larger one. Oh, it's right here. It is a mm -hmm -hmm. Oh, 9 by 12. So then I can make a nice 8 by 10 page with a nice edge. Yes. So I noticed a little bit more the soft pink and then you can seal it, but I'll do that later. And that's it. I'm really liking how things are happening with the layering. So 
Um, one more thing. <laughs> I couldn't go without a sprinkle. Just a little bit. And of course, um, there's, um, I'm, I won't do this to all of the, th all of them. Uh, but hey, it's uh, my art journaling page. And if I like it, that's awesome. It doesn't mean I'm going to put it on the large paintings or whatever, but it's just so much fun. It just adds that energy. And just a little bit there. And of course, those lower ones, I just rub away, as you'll see, while I'm drying. The larger, they turned out to be like a dot rather than a, just a little bit of texture. And get rid of that one and that one up there. Perfect. So it's just in that little area. So this was very fun. Um, I hope you are exploring color as well watching or uh, creating along with me and I just thought I'd try that but no so here's a close-up and um, please subscribe and share and I will see you in the next video